National Educational Television, a program produced for the editor. These newspaper headlines focus public attention. What would your community do in a situation? What has this to do with psychology? You'll find the answer in Adolescence and Alcohol. Hofstra College of Long Island presents for National Educational Television, People, the weekly psychological series about you and me and the folks next door with Dr. Matthew N. Chappell and Dr. Herman D. Goldberg. People is presented with the cooperation of the Educational Television and Radio Center and the New York Daily News Station WPIX. Tonight's program, Adolescence and Alcohol. Good evening. I'm Dr. Herman Goldberg of the Psychology Department of Hofstra College. Our conviction at Hofstra is that the college should form an integral part of the community in which it is located and participate fully in the life and problems of that community. Tonight we will present an example of how cooperation at the grass grassroots level between psychology department and citizens groups and other organizations led from a problem to a nationwide program of research in social psychology. Here to tell us more about it is the chairman of the psychology department at Hofstra, Dr. Matthew N. Chappell. Hello there. Most parents of high school students become concerned with the problem of alcohol sooner or later. The parents of Nassau County felt this problem, and it's characteristic of the citizens in this county that when they have the problem, they do something about it. Tonight, we want to present a step-by-step -step, the process by which the problem of alcohol in Nassau was converted into a research program. And we'll show some of the findings and results that we obtained. We'll present in person many of the people uh, who played a key role uh, in this total effort. And Dr. Goldberg uh, will give us the setting uh, for each contributor as he appears. We'd like you to come with us now back to late 1951, early 1952. Scattered individuals and groups were concerned about high school students drinking. The Western Long Island District Council, the Parent Teachers Association, met to consider this matter. Mrs. John Wallace, Juvenile Protection Chairman, had this to report. Instead of throwing up our hands and saying, oh, those terrible teenagers, we in the PTA are taking a constructive approach to this problem of the increasing number of young people reported to be frequenting bars and grills. First, we are urging parents to make their homes the base of entertainment for their children and their friends. Then we are asking that you, our members, take the lead in your own communities for providing adequate, healthy recreation facilities for young people. Your officers will join with other groups to seek further solutions to this problem. At about the same time, Mr. George Craig, uh, high school athletic director at Baldwin, was frankly alarmed and tried to arouse parents and civic groups to the danger. Before a Kiwanis club, he said, and Mr. McCarthy will read what Mr. Craig said at that meeting. Mr. Craig said, parents must sternly supervise the night activities of their youngsters if the menace of teenage tippling is to be ended. During 20 years in the teaching field, I have learned a lot about kids. And the frightening fact is that drinking has become a problem that is worsening. Kids, under the pretext of going to a school dance or prom, slip away to a nightclub and do some drinking instead. What is the matter with those parents who fail to check on their children? In January of 1952, the Nassau County Grand Jury was in session. Sparked by these rumblings and by a startling series of exposés of teenage drinking, by Long Island's Pulitzer Prize winning paper, Newsday, the grand jury present, made a presentment. And Mr. McCarthy will now read that presentment. The January 1952 grand jury of Nassau County has noted with great concern the increasing number of cases in which youths have committed serious and often 
violent crimes almost immediately after having been drinking in bars, grills, and taverns. And this grand jury hereby condemns the conditions which bring about these evils and calls upon the Alcoholic Beverage Control Board, the law enforcement officers, parents, civic clubs, schools, churches, and social agencies of all kinds in Nassau County to join in helping to eradicate these conditions which breed and encourage criminal activities of youths. So the charges of the grand jury and the publicity given them focused public attention on teenage drinking. In the offices of the State Liquor Authority, there was an immediate action. Commissioner John F. O'Connell called his deputy commissioner, Michael J. Mons, on the phone. Mike, I have another important assignment for you that requires your personal attention. There will be a citizens' meeting uh, presently in Mineola to discuss the presentment recently handed up by the grand jury in Nassau County. As a Nassau resident and the father of a boy attending high school in that community, you're the logical person to represent the authority. I wish you would go to this meeting prepared with such statistics as we have available in our files and that you would also be prepared to offer a constructive plan for positive action to get the facts that spell out this problem. Uh, it would be well to keep in mind that the Shepherd Foundation may be willing to be of assistance should its help be requested. It's vigorous follow-up stories by Newsday with pictures such as these, and they were taken secretly in bars and grills. These provided abundant evidence. Teenagers were indeed being served alcoholic beverages, and in many places without any question as to age. So on February 7th, 1952, in the Nassau County Courthouse, a meeting was held. And representing at the, represented at this meeting were members of the State Liquor Authority, law enforcement agencies, PTA educators, the Hotel Restaurant and Liquor Dealers Association, and they listened to Michael J. Munn as he spoke. The problem of drinking by minors will never be satisfactorily solved until we have a clearer understanding of public attitudes and convictions regarding this practice. We must know, for example, how many minors drink alcoholic beverages, when, where, and under what circumstances they started such practice, how many of them drink in their own homes, how many in licensed premises, and how many elsewhere. How youngsters themselves feel about drinking, how their parents, teachers, and spiritual advisors feel about it. When we have accurate knowledge of all of these attitudes, we can deal intelli intelligently and effectively with the problem. We believe that such accurate knowledge and understanding can be attained through a scientific survey and study conducted by capable, objective, and trustworthy organizations. Fortunately, an organization interested in such research is near at hand, the Mrs. John S. Shepherd Foundation. Just two weeks later, a meeting was held in the Hotel Roosevelt here in New York City. Mr. Lester H. Schreiber, executive secretary of the Mrs. John, H., uh, John S. Shepherd Foundation, spoke at that meeting in the hotel. The Mrs. John S. Shepherd Foundation was organized to conduct scientific research and to promote true temperance in the use of alcoholic beverages through education. The trustees of the foundation feel justified in supporting a research program in Nassau County, recognizing clearly from previous work in the field that if such a study is undertaken, it will be the first of its kind with high school students. The foundation will be willing to supply necessary funds in Nassau County on two conditions. First, the study must be made by a qualified college or university to be selected by the foundation. Secondly, there will be no interference with the group making the study and no attempt to influence the findings by any persons or any groups, including the Shepherd Foundation. If these conditions are acceptable to the Citizens Committee of Nassau County, I will be happy to submit your proposal for final action by the trustees of the Shepherd Foundation. Just a few weeks later, another meeting was held. This one, a meeting of the Citizens Committee, and was held at the Garden City Hotel. There, the trustees of the Shepherd Foundation approved a grant and requested Hofstra College to conduct the study. Dr. Chappell replied to that request as follows. 
The Bureau of Social Research at Hofstra College would be delighted to undertake this study if we all understa understand clearly what's involved. First, we have to recognize that no such study has ever been done before. There is no method available and ready-made to use. Secondly, we must recognize that adolescents have frequently proved to be a rather difficult group from whom to gather significant information. And thirdly, in a particular study, we are dealing in an area uh, where the young people may have rather marked feelings of guilt and may prefer to conceal rather than reveal uh, their uh, use of alcoholic beverages. So the first thing that must be done in approaching this problem is to discover whether or not we can develop a technique through which we can yield adequate and reliable information. If we are successful in doing that, uh, then we would be willing to undertake the countywide study. Dr. Chappell and I spent five months working with small groups of high school students who literally built for us a method of obtaining information. The method was then used on a highly accurate countywide sample of 1,000 high school students. 29 out of 31 high schools in Nassau County uh, gave a, a maximum of cooperation and assistance. The data obtained was coded, punched onto IBM cards, and machine tabulated at uh, Columbia University by Dr. Irving Large. The analysis of the results were made by Dr. Matthew uh, Chappell. Now, the, I have here on a few charts uh, which will show some of the highlights of the findings of this study. Uh, in this uh, first chart, we see that the 86% of all of the students in high school drink some kind of alcoholic beverage on some occasion. Now, it may not be very often. It may be two or three times a year, but sometime they take alcoholic beverage. Now, it, we have and analyze this here by age. This is the 14 year, 15, 16, 17, and 18 and over group. Uh, and we see that the percent of 14 year olds who use something is 79%. This goes up to a maximum of 90% at age 16. It does not go increase beyond uh, age 16. Now in the next chart, uh, we see uh, uh, the kinds of alcoholic beverages that are used. We see here that wine is used on some occasions by 72%, uh, beer by 62% of these high school uh, boys and girls, and uh, whiskey and other hard liquor by only 46%. We are primarily concerned to find out what the consumption was during a given week. And what we found was this, that in the average week, 33% of the high school uh, students will drink either uh, one or more glasses of beer and wine. Uh, only 18% will drink some kind of hard liquor. Uh, a total of 43% will drink something during the average week. Now, the amount they drink is indicated over here. If a student drinks anything at all, uh, and if he drinks beer and wine during a given week, he is on the average going to take about 3.6 drinks. Uh, if he takes a drink of hard liquor at all during the week, on the average, he will take about 2.5 glasses of hard liquor. If we take into consideration all of those who drank something during a given week, they, those who drank something would drink on the average about four drinks during the week. Now, th in this chart, we see how this drank, those that, that drank something during the week varies by age. As we pointed out, 43% may be expected to drink something during the week in Nassau County. <clears throat> this varies by age from 28% at age 14 up to a maximum uh, of 56% at age 17. Uh, it does not increase beyond age 17. Uh, it's interesting to note in that connection that the statutory law is age 18, but the maximums are reached here before uh, age 18. Now, in this chart, we see the amount uh, that is consumed uh, in the average week uh, by, as shown by uh, age. The, for the total group, the average consumption of all of the students uh, in the high schools of Nassau County in a given week is about 1.7 drinks. 
This varies from less than one at age 14 up to 3.2 for age 18. It's interesting to note here, I think, that you do get an increase from 17 to 18 that the maximum comes at 18. It might be supposed, I think, from this, that the fact that the uh, young person has reached the legal age for buying might be thought to be the cause of this rise from age 17 to age 18. However, I've got a little something later here that I think will show you that it is not the statutory law that's the important factor. And now, how many of these young people are permitted uh, to drink uh, at home? Uh, this chart shows uh, that 76% of all high school students in Nassau County are permitted to drink some alcoholic beverage at home on some occasion. This varies from age 14, where 68% are have such permission on some occasions, up to 95% for age 18 and over. In other words, for the 18 year old, practically everybody is permitted to use something at home on some occasion. Now, when we look at the picture of permission to use alcoholic beverage away from home, uh, we see that it's somewhat different. 48% uh, are permitted to use some alcoholic beverage uh, away from home on some occasion. This varies from only 29% here at age 14 up to 84% at uh, age 18. Now the thing that you notice here is the marked jump from age 18, 17 to, to age 18. There is, in other words, a very marked relaxation uh, as far as parental permission to use away from home uh, is concerned as you go from 17 to 18. And it is our conviction that it, the rise that we see in consumption is due not to the fact that the young person has passed the uh, age where he may legally buy, but that the permission on the part of the parent uh, takes such a terrific jump at this point. In other words, that it is the parental law, the relaxation of the parental law, rather than the relaxation of the statutory law uh, that is the important factor. <clears throat> now, the question arises uh, as to whether or not there is a relation between the behavior of parents and child with regard to the use of alcohol. Uh, everything that we know in psychology tells us that if the child has a high degree of respect for the parent, uh, then the child is going to develop the same attitudes, values, beliefs, and sometimes even the same mannerisms uh, that the parent has. Now, this chart shows us uh, the reports that are given by the young people as to the use of alcohol by their parents. 21% of the parents, 21% the, uh, of the students said that their parents use alcoholic beverages frequently. 74% said they use it occasionally. Uh, only 5% said that their parents never use alcoholic beverages. Now, is the use of by the parent related to the use by the uh, child? Uh, and we see here uh, that there is such a relation. Consider this part. If the parents drink frequently, then 93% of their children will use alcoholic beverages on some occasion. If the parents drink only occasionally, 87% of their children will use alcoholic beverage on some occasion. But if the parents never drink, only 46% uh, of the students uh, will drink anything on any occasion. Well, now let us consider next the relation between consumption uh, and, uh, the, uh, and the parental uh, attitude. If the parent drinks frequently and the parent's child drinks anything, he will drink on an average about 2.6 drinks per week. If the parent drinks occasionally and the child drinks anything, he drinks on an average of about 
2.2 drinks per week. But if the parent never drinks, and the, the, his child who drinks something will drink on the average only about 0 0.9 drinks per week. So that we see there's a very clear relation here between the parental use uh, and the uh, use by the children. Now, one of the important factors in this, that led to this study, was the question of purchasing experience uh, of these young people. And on this chart, uh, we, are, we show how, what percent of them have ever tried to buy alcoholic beverage in a bar or cafe, in a grocery store, or in a liquor store. 31% have tried to buy uh, in bars or cafes. 56% have tried to buy in grocery stores. And only 15% have ever tried to buy in a liquor store. Now, of those that have tried to buy, how many of them have been challenged? Well, 11% of that 31% were never challenged. 34 of this 56% were never challenged in the grocery stores, and 4% uh, of the 15 were never challenged in uh, liquor stores. Now, how many were ever refused, were never refused? 15% of this group of 31 have never been refused in a bar or cafe. 36% have never been refused in a grocery store, and only 6% have never been refused uh, in a liquor store. This shows clearly, I believe, that the soft spot in purchasing, of course, is the grocery store. It also shows another thing, that a very large percentage of these children have no difficulty uh, in getting uh, alcoholic beverages in several places. Uh, and the picture for law enforcement is certainly not highly commendable. We are privileged to have with us tonight Commissioner John F. O'Connell of the New York State Liquor Authority, who played so important a role in getting this research started. Commissioner O'Connell, what significance, if any, has this research to you or to the New York State Liquor Authority? Well, Dr. Goldberg, the very fact that this study was made, in and of itself, has been a source of optimism and encouragement to many of us who are responsible for the administration of the liquor control programs of the individual states. Two of your findings are particularly noteworthy to me. Uh, first, you report that the parental law is more effective and more forceful in guiding youth than is any applicable statutory enactment. Second, you also report that parental example is more effective than parental precept and prohibition. Now, both these findings make sense to me. In the training of youth, actions truly do speak more loudly than words, and parental example, be it good or bad, will be efficacious beyond comparison with parental instructions and precepts. The other finding of your study that I find particularly uh, significant leads to the conclusion that social problems, seldom if ever, are solved by action of government alone. Laws, to be sure, are needed to provide sanctions and restraints on the conduct of those who otherwise would seriously injure the public welfare. Yet we should also remember that the history of mankind definitely shows that laws arise out of customs and habits of a people, not the reverse. Laws which fail to keep pace with, and those which outrun these customs and habits, are likely to have neither vitality nor force. Law is the result of the creative impulse, not of the individual lawmaker or lawmaking assembly, but of the special needs, opportunities, perils or misfortunes of communities or nations. In short, the authority to govern comes from God to the people and is delegated by them to the state. Law itself comes up from the people, not down from the state. That's the reason why liquor control administrators sense a great need of support by an informed and understanding public opinion. It explains also why we consider it essential that the objectives of our control statutes be in substantial conformity with public thinking. Your report supplies valuable data on the thinking of students and their parents in the area probed. It indicates the need of like studies under similar auspices in other areas. I am happy to have this opportunity to commend Hofstra College and the Shepherd Foundation for this fine public service, 
And I urge both to carry on with this good work. Well, thank you very much, Commissioner O'Connell, for coming up here tonight. You're very welcome, Doc. We have with us, too, the Mr. Shriver, the Executive Secretary of the Shepherd Foundation. Now, do you feel that, uh, or the other trustees that, of the Shepherd Foundation, that the financial support you supplied here is justified by the results? We of the Mrs. Shep John S. Shepherd Foundation felt the Nassau County study was so important that we asked Dr. Chappelle to develop for the foundation a nationwide program of similar research, and we are doing right now this same study in three new places, one in rural areas of Kansas, <clears throat> one in urban areas of Kansas, and one in Wisconsin. All are under the direction of Dr. Chappelle. When we have adequate information, the foundation believes it will be in a position to make significant contributions to public education for the use of alcoholic beverages with moderation, true temperance, and control. We have presented here tonight only a few high points of the findings of the study. A condensed and very interesting version of this report is published in the March 1954 issue of Better Homes and Gardens. We've come to the end of the road, so to speak. For the time, yes, sir. Friends, as you know, this is the final program in our Hofstra College series. Dr. Goldberg and I wish to thank you for the privilege of being with you, and we wish to thank also uh, President John Cranford Adams and the trustees of Hofstra College, the management of station WPIX, the Television and Radio Research Center, and Dr. Malcolm Preston, who did all of the artwork on this program and all of our succeeding programs and who appeared with us last week. And we can't forget our producer, our floor managers, cameramen, and crew whose patience we have tried sorely here on our appearances. And finally, we wish to express our sincere thanks to the man who has guided us before the camera, uh, our director and friend, Mr. Jack Felice. Good night. Good night. People is a television production of Hofstra College of Long Island and is presented through the cooperation of the Educational Television and Radio Center. This is National Educational Television. The preceding program was produced for the Educational Television and Radio Center. This is National Educational Television.